Okay, so now we're going to review factoring. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at with factoring is our greatest common factor. So remember, this is the largest number that divides all terms, and then also the largest variable that can divide all terms. So first one we have is 18x cubed plus 27x squared. So the largest number that can divide 18 and 27 is 9. And then for our exponents, we're always going to use the smallest one, so x squared. And then we're going to divide. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. And x cubed divided by x squared is x. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And x squared divided by x squared is 1. We don't need to write that. And that would be our factored form. So b is a little different. So we have x squared times the quantity x plus 3 plus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. So we have two terms here because they're being multiplied. And we're looking at what do they both have in common? Okay, They both have the x plus 3. So that's what we're going to factor out. And then if we eliminate those by dividing them out, you can see we're left with x squared plus 5. And there's our factored form. So we use this a lot when we're looking at factoring by grouping. So when polynomials have a greatest common factor of 1, sometimes it's necessary to factor by grouping. This is usually done when there are four terms. So we're going to review that. So here we have x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 12. So when we factor by grouping, we group our first two terms and our last two terms. So looking at x cubed plus 4x squared, we want to determine what is the greatest common factor. So that would be x squared. And we're going to divide. So x cubed divided by x squared is x. And 4x squared divided by x squared is 4. Plus 3x plus 12. The greatest common factor here would be 3. And if we divide that, 3x divided by 3 is x. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So if you'll notice, both of our parentheses are the same. So we can rewrite this as the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of whatever's left on the outside, x squared plus 3. So factoring by grouping is what we're actually going to do as we factor trinomials. So there are two methods. You can either use guess and check, which is described in your book, which if that's the method you choose, that's perfectly fine. Um, or you can use the AC method of factoring, which is what we're going to talk about or review. So looking at a, we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. So I'm going to add in a 1 here, so that way we have our value for a, because remember we're looking at ax squared plus bx plus c. So if we want to find our a times our c, we have 1 times 8, which equals 8. And we want to find the factors of 8 that add to be our value for b, which happens to be 6. So two numbers that multiply to be 8 are 2 and 4. And when we add those together, we do get 6. So that works. And then when a equals 1, use the shortcut. Okay, our shortcut says we can jump straight to our solution. So we're going to use parentheses, x, and then we're going to bring in each of these two terms. Okay, so we have x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 4. Okay, looking at b, we're going to do the same thing. So we have a times c. 
So we have one times negative 18, which equals negative 18. And since a is one, we know when we get find our factors, we can jump straight to our factored form. And our value for b is three. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 18, which are going to be six and negative three. If you add those together, you get three, which matches our middle term. So our factored form is the quantity x plus six times the quantity x minus three. Okay, eight x squared minus 10 x minus three. So using our same method, a times c, we have eight times negative three, which equals negative 24. Our factors of negative 24 that add to be negative 10 would be, let's see here, commonly you guys would say negative six and four. But if you add those together, we get negative two. So that doesn't work. So instead, we want to use negative 12 and a positive two. If you add those together, we get negative 10. So those are our factors. And notice A does not equal one. So this is when we're going to use factor by grouping. So we're going to break this middle term apart so we have 8x squared, bring that down. And then we're going to split this negative 10x into these new terms. Negative 12x plus 2x, and then bring down your minus 3. And now we have four terms, so we can factor by grouping. So if we look at just our first two terms, 8x squared minus 12x, they're both, 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4. And our lowest exponent is an x. And then divide. 8x squared divided by 4x is 2x. Negative 12x divided by 4x is negative 3. 2x minus 3, our greatest common factor is 1. So our inside is going to stay 2x minus 3. The key thing here is our parentheses should always match, which they do. So I'm going to go ahead and write that 2x minus 3 once, since that's our greatest common factor. And then we're left with 4x plus 1. Okay, looking at D, we have 2x squared minus 7xy plus 3y squared. So yes, we have more than one variable, but it's going to be the same process. So we're going to start off with our a times c, so 2 times 3, which equals 6. And we want to find the factors of positive 6 that add to be negative 7, which are negative 1 and negative 6. So bring down your first term, 2x squared, split apart your negative 7xy, so we rewrite this negative 1xy minus 6xy, and then bring down your last term plus 3y squared. Okay, and then we have four terms, so we're going to factor by grouping. So 2x squared minus 1xy the only thing they have in common is an x. 2x squared divided by x leaves us with 2x. And then negative 1xy divided by x is negative 1y. Then we're looking at negative 6xy plus 3y squared. Negative 6 and 3 are both divisible by a negative 3. And then they both have a y in common. So if we divide negative 6xy divided by negative 3y is a positive 2x. And then 3y, excuse me, 3y squared divided by negative 3y is a negative y or negative 1y, either way. So again, our parentheses match. So 
So we have the quantity of 2x minus y times the quantity x minus 3y. Okay, factoring the difference of two squares. So we have a formula, which are a rule or definition. So a squared minus b squared equals the quantity of a plus b times the quantity of a minus b. Okay, so what we do is we take the square root. So if we look at this first example, 81x squared minus 49. Take the square root of both terms, 81x squared and the square root of 49. So the square root of 81x squared is 9x and the square root of 49 is 7. So we take those and we write them as a binomial with addition, so 9x plus 7, and again with subtraction, 9x minus 7. And that's your solution. But when you have a polynomial, so something that's greater than a quadratic, sometimes you have to do it more than once. So x to the fourth minus 81, we take the square root of x to the fourth, we get x squared. And if we take the square root of 81, we get nine. So if we rewrite this factored, we get x squared plus nine, and then x squared minus nine. But we have to be careful. We have another difference of two squares. So we can break this second part. So I'm gonna bring it on the x squared plus nine. We can't do anything with that because it's addition. But we can take the square root of x squared and get x, and we can take the square root of nine and get three. So this can factor out to be the quantity of x plus three times x minus three. Okay, factoring perfect squared trinomials. Um, this is a shortcut you can do, but normally you guys do AC method. I don't care which works best for you is what I want you to do but we are gonna review it. So it says if you have a squared plus two AB plus B squared, that can just simply factor to be the quantity of A plus B squared. Or A squared minus two AB plus B squared equals the quantity of a minus b squared. So you wanna check, can you square root the first and the last term? And then if you multiply those together and double it, does it equal your middle term? So let's check. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of nine is three. So now if we take two, times x times three, is it the same thing as our middle term? We get six x, which matches the middle term, so yes. So our factored form is the quantity of x plus three squared. Looking at b, 25 x squared minus 60 x plus 36. Take the square root of 25x squared, we get 5x. Then take the square root of 36, we get six. Then multiply two times each of those square roots. Two times 5x is 10x, times six is 60x. So this is close, we just need to add in the negative. So instead of writing x plus, we're gonna write 5x minus six squared. Okay, factoring the sum or difference of two cubes. 
So again, we have some rules. So if we look at a cubed, cubed plus b cubed, our formula for factoring is the quantity of a plus b times the quantity of a squared minus ab plus b squared. Or a cubed minus b cubed equals the quantity of a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay, we have an anagram to remember the trinomial. And that is smacks. So you're going to start off with cube rooting both your terms and then write them in your binomial. But then you're going to do smacks. So you're going to square the first, multiply, and change sign. And then you're going to square the second. Okay. So if we look at a, x cubed plus 64, we're going to take the cubed root of x cubed and we get x. Okay. And then we're going to cube root 64 and we get four. So we're gonna write a binomial with that, leaving the signs the way they are. So x plus four. Now we're going to do smacks. So you're gonna square the first, which gives us x squared. We're gonna multiply them together. So x times four and change the sign so it becomes negative plus our last one, so four squared. So if we simplify this, we get the quantity of x plus four times x squared minus four x plus four squared is 16. And that is your factored form. Okay, so let's try B. 27x cubed minus 125. We're going to cube root 27x cubed and get 3x. Then we're going to cube root, and I'm going to bring that sign in with us, so negative 125, which equals negative 5. Bring those together. They make your binomial. 3x minus 5. And then do smacks. Square your first. So 3x squared. Multiply them together. So 3x times negative 5, but change the sign, which means it's going to be negative for now. Plus square your last. And then simplify. So we have the binomial 3x minus 5 times 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Negative 3x times negative 5 is a positive 15x. And negative 5 squared is positive 25. Okay, lastly, if we combine everything together, greatest common factor and AC factoring, difference of squares, all of that, we can use all of those interchangeably. First thing we always start with is check for GCF. So 2x cubed plus 8x squared plus 8x, they're all divisible by 2 and x. We're left with x squared plus 4x plus 4. Then we can factor, or we can actually use factoring using perfect 
square trinomial. Whichever you prefer, I don't care. Um, just for the practice, let's go ahead and do the perfect square. Square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. If we multiply those together and multiply them by 2, we get 4x, which matches our middle term. So we can rewrite the trinomial as x plus 2 squared, and then we're going to bring down our 2x. All right, and looking at b, x squared minus 25a squared plus 8x plus 16. So because we have this a, it kind of messes things up. So this is actually going to bring up a factor by grouping that's slightly different than what we've seen before. So I'm going to rearrange this. x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 25a squared. Now we can look at this trinomial and factor it. Okay, so let's do AC factoring on this one. So A times C equals 16. We're looking for our factors of 16 that add to be 8, which would be 4 and 4. So this becomes x plus 4 times x plus 4 minus 25a squared. Another way to write x plus 4 times x plus 4 would be the quantity of x plus 4 squared minus 25a squared. But here's where you have to be careful. We can take the square root of both of these and we're subtracting. So the square root of x plus 4 squared equals x plus 4. And the square root of 25a squared equals 5a. So we can rewrite this as the quantity of x plus 4 plus 5a and x plus 4 minus 5a. And that is our factored form.